Let's get into it now. A spoiler-free movie review of Civil War. A review I've been itching to do because this is a movie you're going to watch. And no matter who you are, you're going to have an opinion on it. Whether it be you love it or you hate it. This is a movie that is going to make you feel. And I feel like A24 just put out one of the most significant movies of the year for that reason. And this is their most expensive movie to date. Costing $50 million. They spent a lot of money on promotion, which I haven't really seen A24 do on a massive scale. Throwing the trailer everywhere, getting people talking about this movie. And what they really sold to us was a story about a second civil war in a post-apocalyptic America where tensions are running high. You have... A story that when we saw the trailer first, it very much echoed what is happening in the country now. And I think that is why this trailer in this movie had so much impact. Because it's something that we see and we think, oh, we're about two steps away from that actually happening. And it very much felt like it was going to be a very sci-fi dystopian war movie. And just it being an A24 movie, I am instantly sold have been a fan of the studio for a very long time they have earned that right for me anything they put out i'm gonna watch it it might not be first run in theaters but eventually i'm going to watch every a24 movie it has been that way probably for me since 2019 and this is a movie that i do think everybody should give it a chance and watch it but the entire time i was expecting a different movie And it's because of the trailer. And even though I read what the plot line was going into it, I still had those initial impressions from the trailer of it being a war action movie. And the more I read into how they were promoting the movie and going back and reading the synopsis, which I'll read it now. A journey across a dystopian future America following a team of military embedded journalists as they race against time to reach D.C. before rebel factions descend upon the White House. In my head, it's still going to be an action war movie. Even though right there in the description, it says it's about journalists racing against time. And that is exactly what this movie was. And it took me a little bit to get used to that. If I wouldn't have seen that trailer and had those feelings of it being a war movie, this movie probably would have been a five out of five for me. So it's almost a movie I need to watch again because I had a much different perception of it based on all the promotional materials, which... Is what a trailer can do. It wants to get the butts in the seats. That is the point of a trailer. And through editing, choosing what parts of the movies you use, because they use some parts that sell it that way, almost out of context. And I, I'm not trying to rag on the movie here. I'm not trying to rag on A24. Just for me, I thought that is what it was going to be. And if you would have just told me, or even changed the title to Civil War journalism, civil war reporting, the new civil war reporting, something along those lines, I would have had a different feeling going into it. It would have been enough to tell me it's an A24 movie about journalists, and here is the dark side of reporting on very awful things, which is what the movie does. Kirsten Dunst is a seasoned war reporter, photographer, and the question she brings to herself, to her and Kaylee Spaney's character in the movie Is it their job to ask questions? Or are they just there to photograph the war and send the photos home and let the people at home answer the question? So what does their morale as journalists, as press, play into this? Because you are taking pictures of very awful things, but is it just you providing that service to take those pictures? At times it reminded me of Nightcrawler with Jake Gyllenhaal, and the entire moral of that movie was... If it bleeds, it leads. And how far will you go to get that blood on the screen to get viewers to watch? And how much is really overstepping the bounds? That is what these journalists are struggling with because they are trying to get to D.C. to get to the president before these rebel factions, as the description says, get to him first so they can get an interview. And they are documenting everything along the way. And they're... Very awful things. There are very intense moments in this movie that will just have your stomach in knots. And I like movies that do that. The last movie that really had my stomach in knots like this was another A24 film, 
uncut gems. I love being on the edge of my seat, feeling like I'm about to puke everywhere because of the anxiety. And I'm already an anxious person. I already drink way too much coffee. So I love kind of living in that, I guess. And when a movie can do that, I'm just, oh, that is my favorite experience. Because I rarely go into a horror movie and experience the fear. You have to give me something that makes me feel anxious. So if you don't like those types of movies, I don't think this is the movie for you because Kelsey watched it with me. She does not really like movies that give you that anxiety. And there were moments in this movie that were very hard for her to watch because they are so shocking. Some of the action style is very blunt when it comes to the actual war scenes in the movie and all the people fighting against each other. And those moments are few and far between. And it took me, I would say, the better half of the first act to really realize that they weren't going to dive so much into what caused the Second Civil War, why exactly everybody was fighting. They really almost make that the B story. This Second Civil War just happens to be happening, and really what they are looking at and discussing is the morale of these journalists. So they kind of give you little clues here and there with some of the other characters, revealing different things about why they are fighting, revealing why everybody hates the president, why they are going there and why it has gotten so bad. It's also a commentary on how different people accept or don't accept the Second Civil War. Some people are engaging, some people are fighting one way or the other, and some people are choosing to believe, like they say in the trailer, that nothing is happening, that everything is good. Once I got into the idea of, okay, this is really just a movie focusing on the morales of journalism, and also... It's really just a road trip movie, not so much a war movie because there are these war sequences and battles that happen and they're there with the soldiers documenting that and seeing some very brutal things. But it's really just them traveling to D.C. hundreds of miles and bonding as a group and going through all of the kind of tropes that you would see in a road trip movie. And I love me a good road trip movie. Wasn't really expecting that here. So... I don't want to say it was a little bait and switchy, but it just led me to believe that it was going to be all action all the time. Now, if I watched this movie a second time, knowing what I know now, I think I would completely love it anymore. No notes. Because it is a powerful movie. Although I do feel like, at times, it's a little bit pretentious. Alex Garland, which a lot of people were kind of defending, oh, you're going into an Alex Garland film, you should know what to expect. But I feel like at times he sacrificed making an entertaining movie just all the way through, making it a fun ride and really giving us characters we could bond with and grow with and feel for, which I think the movie did miss a lot of opportunity with character development. Wagner Mora in particular, I know he's a good actor. I watched Narcos. He was great as Pablo Escobar, but I found him really unbelievable in this role To the point that it really took me out of it. And almost like it was stuck in second gear that I was really waiting for it to ramp up a little bit more, a little bit more. And it never quite got there. Even at the very end, I feel like it should have been way more satisfying and exciting and exhilarating for as much as our characters have been through. It didn't really feel like they grew as people. And then the outcome was kind of just, oh, all right. All right, we'll see you later. (laughs) It just felt like it really kind of went out. Like if you were just kind of blowing out a whoopee cushion at the very end and just like, like that is how this movie left me feeling. Needless to say, it was still a very entertaining ride. A lot of ups and downs. And it did have those moments of tension. I know it probably sounds like I hated the movie, but I feel with an A24 film, with an Alex Garland film, I'm going to be a little bit overcritical, mainly because I think a movie like this is just fun to discuss because I love movies that create a conversation among people, that divide people, that make people want to see it more based on some people hating it. So I think no matter what, I was going to have a little bit more of a heavy hand on some of the criticism just because I thought this was going to be my next favorite movie. Didn't really land into a top tier film for me, but it was still a really fun watch. I saw it in 35 millimeter, which means that most movies you go see in normal theaters, chain theaters, 
they're usually all digital now, which is really all the same. But for me, sometimes I just like watching something in 35 millimeter, which means they actually have the film reel that they load up, put it on a projector. And for me, it just gives like that extra level of warmth. You can see some of the flickers on the screen. You can hear it going in the theater during the quiet moments. But I will say that seeing it in a theater with the big sound, being able to experience it with other people did add another level of enjoyment. A movie that creates tension and makes you feel stressed, I think is best experienced in a theater. But if you are somebody who is a little bit squeamish, doesn't like feeling like that, I would say probably wait until it's streaming. That way you can hide underneath the cover, underneath a pillow or something, or even just turn it down a little bit whenever those moments happen because it does get really loud really quickly. So once I got into the idea of the story, I really enjoyed it because I love an A24 film, obviously. I love a road trip film. Kirsten Dunst is amazing. And I'm glad to see her in a role like this where she was out speaking recently of saying there was a time in Hollywood where she was only being offered roles that were sad wife, Sad mom. So I loved her at the forefront of this movie. Her husband, Jesse Plemons, was also in it. And like I was saying earlier, such an underrated actor. And he just makes the movie instantly better. The only thing I really wish they did differently was give his character more screen time. Because when he was in the movie, oh, it was great. You get a glimpse of it if you've seen the trailer. All you have to do is throw Jesse Plemons in there, and it makes any movie better. I'll stand by that all day. But overall, I am just glad that this movie is succeeding. Made $24 million its opening weekend. With that debut, it became A24's biggest debut of all time. So that proves that all of that extra marketing they did, the trailer, it worked. It got people into the seats. It got people talking. It did what they needed it to do because it cost them $50 million to make, which is their most expensive film to date. And just by comparison, before Civil War, their highest opening weekend was Everything Everywhere All at Once. That only made $500,000 its opening weekend. So huge for them. Again, A24 is still a smaller studio. And you see the $24 million and think, that's kind of a flop. Other movies come out and make $50 million easy. Dune doesn't wake up for less than $80 million. I mean, just four or five years ago, a big movie would make $100 to $150 million. But for that previous opening, that was their highest. For it being kind of the start pre-summer blockbuster season, this is great for them. And this is what they are trying to venture into more, of creating these movies that feel like $200 million blockbusters, which is... What all the other studios are able to do. They don't have that kind of money. $50 million is a lot for them to spend on one movie. But they are looking to create more movies like this. More action. Big franchises is what they are looking to do to make their studio sustainable. Because they always put out movies that are unique. That audiences really identify with. That we feel like we're not just getting a remake. We're not just getting the same thing we've seen a million times. So they really value the relationship they build with this cult following that is the A24 fan base. But obviously, you need the money to back it up because you can't continue to sustain that unless you are making these movies that are grossing more at the box office. You make a movie that is able to generate this and it's able to fund all the other projects, which I think is what they are trying to do right now. So overall... I think it is a very noteworthy movie. Just know if you haven't seen it yet, change your expectation a little bit if you've seen the trailer and just know it's not going to be all action all the time and it might not be for you if you don't like movies that induce anxiety. Although I do think seeing it on the big screen does take it up another level. That's not for you. It is definitely still a watch at home movie. I think everybody should give this movie a shot. And for that reason, I give Civil War four out of five photographs. Look at this photograph.